making a tap into a live duct. The following video shows how to make a tap into an operating duct system. This operation has been done successfully in semiconductor clean rooms thousands of times. Using ATS saddle taps and ATS chem bond patented resin, it is possible to make taps even into live systems without the need for shutting down. By following the procedure outlined herein, you can make taps into live systems with almost no pressure loss. ATS ran tests at California University at Long Beach on this method. There was less than 3% pressure loss at the tool. This test report is available on request by contacting ATS at 510-234-3173. There is no other FM approved manufacturer that tests its products or methods as thoroughly as ATS. Ask an ATS engineer for information. This operation requires a blast gate or damper with blade seals installed in the tap. Be sure to observe the required clean room protocol for cleanliness before performing the following procedure. The immediate area of the live tap operation may have to be temporarily closed off with plastic to contain particles. For this operation, two or more workers are recommended. Begin by locating the position of the tap onto the main duct. Place the tap into position. With a china marker or soapstone, mark the main duct along the inside perimeter and the outside of the saddle flange. Mark the center line of the duct. This is important because there will be no other way of positioning the tap in the exact spot once the hole is cut. With the second man vacuuming, drill a quarter inch hole near the upstream end of the cutout plate and insert an eye screw. Drill a 3 8 inch hole on the outside edge of the line made for the tap hole at the upstream end of the cutout plate. With a saber saw vacuum operating, Place the blade in the 3 8 inch hole and begin cutting around the outside of the oval line. Cut away 3 8 inch extra material around the outside of the line until the cutaway plate begins to move easily as the perimeter cut nears completion. At this point, slide the sheet metal plate over the cut area close to the eye screw. Hold the eye screw firmly so that the cutout plate does not fall into the airstream when the cut is complete. A cord can be attached to the eye screw to prevent losing the plate into the airstream. Complete the cutting with a saber saw until the plate is loose. When the cutting is complete, pull the plate out and away as you slide the sheet metal completely over the hole. Temporarily secure the cover plate to the duct area with clean room tape. Caution. The inside of the cutout plate has been exposed to hazardous chemicals and must be decontaminated before it is disposed of. Place 6 mil clear plastic over the tap and tape securely. Apply Kembon putty mix to the underside of the saddle flange, spreading the putty evenly, creating a layer about 1 8 inch thick. Pull away the tape securing the sheet metal cover plate and slide the cover along the center line of the main duct to the edge of the hole. Place the back end of the saddle flange against the main duct and align it with the saddle flange outline made on the main header. As you press the tap towards the main to secure it into position, slide the cover plate out. At the moment the cover plate is removed, Force the tap into its set position and hold it firmly until the draw bands are tightened to secure the tap firmly against the main header. Note, as the saddle flange is being pressed against the header duct with the draw bands, putty will ooze out around the saddle flange perimeter on the inside and outside of the duct. This excess putty will be used to seal the inside seam and protect the cut edge exterior surface of the header duct from chemical attack. Immediately slit the plastic covering in the branch opening and insert your gloved hand into the end of the tap. At the same time, lift the slide of the blast gate. 
Make sure you have donned appropriate chemically resistant gloves and gear. Reach in and spread the putty that has oozed inside firmly into the seam of the saddle and the cut header duct edge. Smooth the putty all around to form a beveled transition along the seam to provide maximum chemical protection. As you pull your hand out of the tap, slide the blast gate closed to block the introduction of air into the operating system and disturbing the air balance. Remove the plastic from the end of the tap. With a squeegee, bevel the excess putty mix on the outside perimeter of the saddle flange to create a smooth seam. Continue with exterior bond as previously described. Review section. Saddle tap installation operating conditions. Two workers. Blast gate in saddle. Mark main duct with tap location. Drill a 3 8 inch hole to facilitate cutting. Drill a 1 quarter inch hole for lifting screw. Cut hole for inner tap diameter. Slide sheet metal plate over the cut area. Hold the eye screw firmly and complete cut. Remove the FRP plate as the sheet metal plate is slid over the opening. Temporarily secure the sheet metal with tape. Prep saddle tap. Close blast gate and apply plastic wrap over end. Apply chem bond putty to the saddle tap. Remove tape from sheet metal plate. Slide sheet metal plate onto the edge of the hole. Place the edge of the saddle tap into position. Simultaneously press the tap into place and slide the metal sheet plate away. Use straps to temporarily hold saddle while putty cures. Open blast gate and slowly reach hand inside of tap through plastic wrap. Bevel putty mix on inside of joint seam. Slowly remove hand and close blast gate. Remove straps after curing. Apply Kembon resin and glass to the exterior of the joint. Refer to the installation instructions for the type and number of glass wraps.